Okay, so you have the body structure of the commentary further down. So once you've got your introduction, your first paragraph, you know, these, these paragraph structures exactly mirror the five-point method that we've been using in the annotation process. So the first paragraph is about the opening section. So when you have defined those discrete narrative moments in your poem or your extract from the play, you're trying to obviously separate them into these sections. So the opening paragraph is about that opening section, where that first narrative moment takes place, where it begins and ends, and defining what the unique style and meaning combination is in that particular part of the of the text. So what you're looking for here is a, co is a sense of where this happens, what um, stylistic feature is evident in terms of that particular part of the text, and then what meaning is being created through that stylistic element. So let's have a look at an example. In this opening section, Lady Macbeth begins formulating her plan by analysing Macbeth's nature through a rhetorical argument in her monologue. So what you've got there is the sense first. Lady Macbeth is formulating her plan by analysing Macbeth's nature. That is the meaning. That is what is happening in an important way in the opening section of this um, section from the play. The style feature here, you want to be quite broad in terms of the way you define your paragraph. So you're looking every single topic sentence, you're looking for a, a combination of, of style or writer's choices and meaning. So in the openings of paragraphs, you want to think really about broad elements of, of style and writer's choices like tone, the, the way that the writer feels about the piece of uh, the subject in the writing, the mood of the piece, what's the general mood or atmosphere, or what is actually being described in the piece of writing that you're dealing with. You want to keep it quite broad in your topic sentence. So here, a rhetorical argument in a monologue is quite broad. There are a number of different style features in a sentence like that, in, in a rhetorical argument, because you want to give yourself in your topic sentence flexibility about what can come underneath it. So if you look at all the examples, tricolon, metaphor, parallelism, antithesis, and metaphor again, all of these features are all an element of rhetorical argument. So this particular type of language is an element of Shakespeare's style. It is one of his writer's choices, as we would call it. And this sentence is broad enough to give me a chance to talk about all of these different features. So what you've got to do then is pick out all the details from these from this opening section and then say ultimately what are the similarities between all of these details, what's the style features that are, that, are, that are distinctive in this opening and then think about it in these terms, what's the tone that it creates, what mood does it create or atmosphere, what is the topic of its description. So here you've got that combination, Lady Macbeth formulates a plan by analysing Macbeth's nature that is the meaning, the sense, and then the style element is through a rhetorical argument in her monologue. Then what we have here is fairly straightforward. Quotations from that section of the extract that are elements of rhetorical argument. The opening, glams thou art and cordor and shalt be what thou art promised is that example of tricolor, gives us that sense of certainty. Her metaphor that she uses to describe Macbeth's personality is too full of the milk of human kindness. She is using this to convince herself that Macbeth um, you know, needs her assistance effectively. Then the parallelism, what thou wouldst highly, that wouldst thou holily, that phrase that was so thorny that we were to, when we were looking at it in the discussions, an example of parallelism here, she's trying to create a sense of balance to expose his hypocrisy so that she then has a reason to interfere with his life. The antithesis would not play false and yet would wrongly win. The fact that Macbeth won't cheat but would win wrongly is antithetical. There are opposing ideas in the same statement. Again, they expose the flaws in his thinking that give her a reason to interfere. And then finally, that metaphor of pouring her spirits in his ear, in thine ear, suggests that she has come to some sort of evil resolution. So then, once you've got an introductory section along this, you're looking for the second moment of significance. So you're looking often for a climactic moment in a text in this second paragraph. However, the structure of this particular extract doesn't exactly suit this because the concluding moment 
of the of the extract is significantly more climactic in this particular case where she creates this sort of spell like incantation so your second body paragraph should be the second distinctive narrative moment usually that will be a climactic moment in the center of the text here not so much so again we're looking for that style and sense combination Shakespeare then uses the dialogue between the messenger and Lady Macbeth to underline her initial shift into anxiety. The dialogue between the messenger and Lady Macbeth is the element of the writer's choice that Shakespeare uses, and the meaning is to show her shift into anxiety, to show her shift into stress. So, the quotations, the king comes here tonight, thou art mad to say it. The subtext in this dialogue, what is not being spoken about is important here. And the subtext present here is her evil intentions, that she isn't saying why he would be mad to tell us that the king comes here well because he's fallen into her murderous trap second example is describing this the, the, the attendant describing the messenger that overtook macbeth who almost dead for breath had scarcely more than would make up his message that personification of his breath trying to make up his message gives us a huge sense of panic and urgency that the, the, the king's arrival is real and it is pressing those are the first two paragraphs 